Christmas in Toronto, and we welcome you to our virtual Christmas Eve service. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you those secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Eternal God, this holy night is radiant with the brilliance of your one true light, as we have known the revelation of that light on earth. Bring us to see the splendor of your heavenly glory through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, as scripture is read, let us allow God's word to speak to us and ponder the meaning for our lives. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 to 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nations. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest as people exhort when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burnt as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulder, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
from Paul's letter to Titus. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem, and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them, the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
My friends, it has been a long and strange year, and yet I can now say something I've been yearning to say these last few weeks, and that is Merry Christmas. I, I know for many of us, this is going to be perhaps one of the most difficult Christmases of our lives. And part of the reason for that is what we have, our expectations, all of us have expectations of how Christmas should be. Let me tell you, as a priest, I have expectations. I look forward to the very first Mass on Christmas Eve. I look forward to the Mass on Christmas Day. I, I like to keep Christmas going. I look forward to St. Stephen's Day. I get ready for the excitement of the octave of Christmas, New Year's Day. I mean, it's just one wonderful thing after another. You know, it's not just these services, although they, I think, are the most important for me. It's also the opportunity to connect with friends. It's the opportunity to enjoy wonderful Christmas goodies. Oh, so tasty. It's a wonderful time of year, and yet, this year is not going to be like that at all. I have to admit that doing a virtual service for Christmas Eve is wonderful in the sense that the Eucharist is being celebrated. It gives our parish family a chance, at least virtually, to join together. It gives people the opportunity to receive spiritual communion through the celebration of the Eucharist. And yet, there's a huge part of me which feels empty. This is unlike any Christmas Eve I've ever experienced. And for me, it's a Christmas Eve I hope we won't have to duplicate ever again. One of the, well, I should say, uh, perhaps the single most important thing about Christmas is that for us, it's a source of strength throughout the whole year. It's not just one of the most important things, perhaps it is the most important thing. And what Christmas is, in a nutshell, is the birth of Christ, God coming to be with humanity. It's quite a monumentous event, and it's an event that we know is important. That's why we read the same gospel every year. I've actually never preached on another gospel on Christmas Eve. Why? Because this gospel is of critical importance. It's a gospel we need to hear every year. So great is the truth of Christ coming to be with us that we need to hear this gospel again and again. On Christmas Day, I like to preach from the Gospel of John. Why? Because of its great importance. The Christmas readings are readings that stay with us. They're a source of great strength, they're a source of great joy, and more than ever, this year, we need to hear those readings. We need to hear the readings because so much of what we assume will happen at Christmas won't happen this year. It's going to be a difficult one for many of us. Seeing friends and family is, is a great joy all of us have. And this year we're going to have to limit our contacts. It's hard. It really is. And one of the things I've noticed this Christmas uh, Eve, well, okay, I'll be honest. We recorded before Christmas Eve, but you get the idea. One of the things I've been noticing leading up to Christmas Eve is the amount of people who are mailing presents right now. This year it's quite significant. I go to the post office and I mean the lines are very, very long. And the reason for that is we can't really go to deliver presents in the same way we used to. We don't get that personal one-on-one -on -one contact. And yet, and yet we still want people to know we love and care about them. And that's why we make the effort to stand in the post office and wait and wait and wait and think, please sign your signature on the line so I can mail my thing to the person that's like three people ahead of us in line. We wait because it's an important thing for us to do. Christmas is a time when our relationships matter perhaps more than they do at other times of the year. And this is a good thing because the way we treat people, the way we interact with people at Christmas provide us a model for how we should do it for the rest of the year. Christmas gives us the excuse to be the people we know God wants us to be. It gives us the excuse, gives us the reason for us to be a little better, to be a little more charitable, to be a little more joyful, to be a little more thankful for all that God has done. I always look at Christmas as just a marvelous time of year which has so much potential. 
That's why the great Christmas movies like It's a Wonderful Life or, or Scrooge with Alistair Sim will be played long after we are gone because that message is so important in them. And that message is that God has come to be with us. So we should try to be a little more like God. It's interesting because I think at Christmas we often are those people we know we can be. And yet, sometimes what happens, and this is the true shame of it, is we get into that Christmas mode Christmas Eve. Christmas Day, it's a wonderful celebration. Then all of a sudden, at the stroke of midnight, it's Boxing Day. Oh yes, suddenly we think about returning those things to the stores that we didn't like. Suddenly, we think about spending a little of that Christmas money on things that we absolutely feel we need. Suddenly, peace, goodwill towards our fellow human beings changes to, I've got to get a parking space at the mall. Oh my gosh, I hope they're not sold out of what I want at the bay. That's, that's how we often feel. This year, we're going to miss both Christmas and Boxing Day, those experiences. And to be honest, I don't think missing the Boxing Day experience is a bad thing. But this means that we should try all the harder to make the most we can out of this Christmas. If we look at the very first Christmas, Mary and Joseph had to make the best out of a situation which was beyond their control. They went to Bethlehem. That wasn't their place of residence. There was no room at the inn. Their first visitors were a bunch of shepherds. That definitely was not how they would plan a Christmas if they even knew what a Christmas was. And yet, we look back at that first Christmas and we see good things that happened there. We see Jesus' birth. We see so much joy, so much happiness over the simple birth of a child. It's truly profound. Centuries later, we still look at that wonderful moment with great joy. We still think of that wonderful time in history with great, um, great comfort. It's something which makes us feel very good, and it's good that it does, because it should. One of the hard things, though, this year is it's just been a tough year. I think of friends I haven't actually seen in person since February, which I'm probably not even going to see by next February at the rate of things. I think of all of the holidays we've missed, starting with St. Patrick's Day. I mean, we missed that, we missed Easter. I mean, it's been a year where we miss one thing after another. How is it we can celebrate Christmas when we can't be together? It's a good question. And it's a question I don't think there's really a satisfactory answer to, except this. Do what you can with what you have. If you've got a phone, use it. Call loved ones, talk to them. Yes, you can't see them in person. Yes, you're not gonna be there to share the turkey, but at least make the connection. If you like seeing visuals, video call them, use Zoom. Find a way to make that connection. Yeah, it's not the same, but it will make you appreciate the opportunity you'll eventually have to be with that person in person again. Just because we can't be together in the same physical space as we were before doesn't mean that we can't be together. Sometimes, when we look at life, life doesn't always give us what we want, what we plan for, what we think we're entitled to. And yet God always gives us opportunities. God always does. Think about those shepherds that very first Christmas. They probably had no clue they were going to be present to meet the Savior of the world at his birth. No clue whatsoever. Think of Mary and Joseph. They've gone on a long journey, which basically they took uh, you know, at the end of Mary's pregnancy. Now they have a newborn son, a, a, you know, a cause of great celebration. It really is. Even in dark times, times when we feel down, we feel depressed, we have an opportunity to make the best of the situation. There are always things we could be doing. It's easy to feel sorry for ourselves. It really is. It's easy to wake up and think, hmm, the only turkey I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have to make myself. <laughs> or, oh, you know what? I, I can't find my DVD. Well, some people still use DVDs. I, I know that 
people use stream now, but some people still use DVDs. Right? Like, I can't find my DVD for Charlie Brown's Christmas special. Or, oh man, it's like I totally forgot to mail that last Christmas present to my brother. It's going to get there a little late. It's easy to feel bad about the mistakes we make. On the other hand, there's other things we could be doing. There's other things we should be doing. If all we do is make excuses, we're not going to enter into this wonderful, wonderful time of year wholeheartedly. We're going to be held back. What we need to do is we need to be joyful for what we have. One of the things at St. Luke's um, that was always an exciting thing is to see the crash, the Christmas set. This year, we don't have as full a Christmas set as we usually do. We actually have the, the smaller one. We have like an auxiliary set. And, and the auxiliary set is over here. No, it's not as beautiful as the big crash set. We didn't even set the stable. Jesus is outside in our crash. And that's okay. But the important thing is, even though it's not how we would normally do it, the fact is we're doing something. If we have a look around, we still have the Eucharist happening in a limited way, of course, because all of us can't be together. You know, we're still concluding the season of Advent. Tonight, the Christ candle has been lit. It's different from the way we normally do things or the way we normally want things to be done, but that's okay. This year, we have to do the best with what we have. And there are lessons that this year should teach us that we can use going forward. If we can learn something from this year, it's been worth it. If we can learn that perhaps some of our systems were not adequate for when pandemics hit, that's something well learned. If we can learn that perhaps we've taken friends for granted that we shouldn't, that's something we can learn which we can apply to our own lives. If we learn that much of our lives was you know, was, was lived without much thought to the deeper meaning of why it is we live. We've learned something. This could be a year which will benefit us going forward if we are prepared to learn some lessons from it. Doesn't mean that we had to enjoy the experience. Doesn't mean we're going to enjoy the next few months of waiting for the vaccine to get distributed and for life to slowly turn back to normal. It, it, it's a year which all of us have felt frustration anger, hurt, annoyance. It's a year where many of our tempers just couldn't be held because we had been through so much. And that's the kind of year it's been. If that experience is a learning experience, if that experience helps us to be better people, that is a good thing which can come out of it. If though we don't learn anything, we're no farther ahead than we were before. And that is a pity. This Christmas is a hard Christmas. I admit it. All of us are feeling not as Christmassy as we usually do, and yet this Christmas is still Christmas. It's still an opportunity for us, in a limited way perhaps, to connect with those we love, to, to do some good in the world. So my friends, once again, I wish you a Merry Christmas. Let us confess our faith as we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God and true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified in the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and 
has it been that all that I will have? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Giver of life, who proceeds from the Father? With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Brothers and sisters, on this most holy night of our Lord's birth, we pray that we may find peace, joy, and contentment in this holy season. Let us pray for ourselves and all those in need of prayer, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Church of Christ, that it may faithfully proclaim the good news of salvation and may care for the need of the needs of God's people in all corners of the world. We pray to you, O Lord, Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For peace in our troubled world. That the darkness of war and injustice may be replaced by the light of peace and love. We pray to you, O Lord, Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For all those in need of our prayers, for the homeless, the unemployed, the hungry, those who are hospitalized, especially those known to us, for those who at this moment are in the hospital because of COVID, We pray for those who are imprisoned in body and soul, and all those for whom this season is one not of joy, but of trial and sadness. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the sick, especially those from this our congregation, that their illness may be turned into health and their sorrow into rejoicing. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For those who labor this night on behalf of others, for doctors and nurses and all frontline workers, for police officers and firefighters, for gas station attendants, bus and taxi drivers, and all those who work to prevent that, and all those whose work prevents them from sharing this evening with those they love. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Mighty God, mercifully hear the prayers of the people you have chosen as your own. Give us zeal in our ministries and joy in our work. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you. Thought, word, and deed, by, by what, what we have, have done, done and, and by what we have left undone. We, we, we have not loved you with our own heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Let us pray, source of light and gladness, accept all we offer on this joyful feast. May we grow up in him who unites our lives to yours, for he is Lord now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We be the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light and accessible. From before time and forever, fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And, beholding your presence, they offer you unceasing praise, joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven. We acclaim you and glorify your name as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy you came to our help, so that in seeking you we might find you. Again and again you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners' freedom, to the sorrowful joy, to fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might no longer live for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift, for those who believe, to complete his work in the world, and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you as Heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you. We bless you. We give thanks to you. And we praise you, Lord our God. Father, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and this cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic charge, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember all who minister in your church. Remember all your people and all who seek your truth. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light.
and grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with Saint Luke and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. So I am here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to life and light. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
tonight you have united earth and heaven in sending your Son to take our human nature. May we who have tasted heavenly things share in the life of his eternal kingdom. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Glory to God, whose power over the chaos can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and evermore. We look forward to joining you tomorrow morning for Christmas Day as we continue to celebrate the birth of our incarnate Savior, Jesus Christ.